Welcome to the 16th of October 2024 RuneScape update. Reminder. Thanks to their continued efforts to improve infrastructure, there will be no downtime during game updates including this week, except for major content launches. The game will reboot at 11.30am BST as usual, following a 45 minute timer. Halloween 2024. October is here and Halloween spirit has taken over Gilnor. This year's Halloween event screams pumpkin spice and all things sus. South Falador is brimming with pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns where both new and familiar faces await, but this year you'll need to make this spooky even spookier. You may also notice some stinking cute details along the way. Here's what awaits you when starting the Halloween event. This year you'll meet Marika, a lady who loves farming. After losing a loved one who loved cats, she put her farming skills to good use and created a cat portrait by planting pumpkins as a tribute. But doesn't it look a bit off? Visit the farm south of Falador to see Marika's pumpkin portrait for yourself and help her make it perfect. As always, there are some wicked rewards for you to keep. First up, you can earn the Scarecrow shirt to celebrate Halloween in freaking good style. This year you'll also receive a customizable pumpkin head which lets you pick the colour and expression of your choice. You can also unlock a scarecrow to display at your player owned house and again you can customise it with the colour and expression of your choice. You can place the scarecrow anywhere in your player owned house, just like the wind timber tree. A perfect way to welcome your guests to a Halloween shindig. Lastly, you can also unlock the rewards from all previous Halloween events. Speak to the Ango and Draenor to claim them. Valamore the Rising Darkness Combat Achievements Valamore the Rising Darkness has been live for three whole weeks, so you've had plenty of time to get to grips with the new bosses and it's time to up the challenge with some combat achievements. You may now take on 11 new combat achievements for Huey and 9 for Mox, ranging from medium to grandmaster. The medium combat achievements for Huey are to kill the Huey once and kill it using only earth spells. The hard combat achievements are to kill it 10 times, kill it whilst it's vulnerable, and kill it while wearing two pieces of Huey armor. The elite combat achievements for Huey are to kill it 25 times, to kill it perfectly 5 times without leaving, and to kill it in 2 minutes 30 seconds. And for master we have kill it using only dragon bean weaponry, and kill it in 2 minutes 30 seconds with 5 or fewer players. And then for grandmaster we have kill it in 2 minutes and 30 seconds with 3 or fewer players. For mocks, the medium tasks are to kill it once and to kill it using only glacial tumulty as a weapon. For hard, we have kill it 20 times, kill it 10 times without leaving her chamber, kill her without taking any damage, kill her without any of her unstable eyes shattering and kill her in less than 1 minute. And then for elite, we have kill a mox without losing any prayer points and kill her in less than 30 seconds. Further Valor more the rising darkness improvements. Aside from these much anticipated combat achievements, they've been working on making the gameplay experience smoother across Valor This week brings the following improvements. Caviar and Rogue can now be added to your regent pouch and wearing the prescription goggles can now save them when making barbarian potions. They've fixed a bug where Waska potions unfinished couldn't be stored within potion storage or made via Sar. All new items from Valor the rising darkness are now usable in death's coffer, provided they are tradable and meet the 10,000 GP minimum value. Winter Todd feedback changes. Thousands of you have been huddling around the Winter Todd following its big update last week. Gapers who go for solo Winter Todd have voiced that restoring a Pyromancer is less lucrative after the update since you only use one potion now. Compensate, they've increased the points per Pyromancer healed from 30 up to 75. Some of you have also reported having a hard time telling the difference between your cold hit splats and those of your woodcutting comrades. They've adjusted some settings so that other people's cold hit splats now appear a bit darker than yours, so it should be easy to tell when you're being hit. Other changes. They've adjusted the PvP arena matchmaking system to ensure that matches occur more frequently by grouping players into two groups. Lower ranks consist of bronze, iron, and steel, and they'll be matched with each other. Higher ranks consist of mithril, adamant, rune, and dragon, and they'll also be matched with each other. They've also fixed a bug where your assigned opponent would simply fail to show up to the match. No excuses now. Some other notable fixes. The warning message about placing all your finds in the Varric Museum crate can now be disabled permanently. A pop-up chat box message for Housebreaker and Varlamore has been replaced with a less intrusive game message that can be spam filtered. Superior Slayer creatures will now consider spawning elsewhere if they cannot spawn in tight spaces due to their size. It should now be drastically more likely to succeed. PvP World Rota. The PvP Rota has moved to period A539 is the US PvP World, 318 is the UK Bounty Hunter World, 548 is the Germany High Risk PvP World, 577 is the US free to play PvP world and 559 is the UK LMS competitive. The Australian world 390 for LMS competitive has been activated within this rota and also the Australian world 569 for bounty hunter has been activated within this rota. The PvP arena is using maxed med loadouts in ranked duels and tournaments this week.